So yeah, this yeah. guy here on the screen is Peter Mulvey. I'm Kevin Hufford. And Peter, you're coming to VCA to uh, make some music for us. Yes, I am. On the 2nd of June, is this correct? I believe that is correct. Um, so, yeah, I know. That's how I feel. So, Peter, not every um, not everybody knows who you are. So give us the, the nickel tour starting, like, in third grade. Oh, wow. Okay. Uh, northwest side of Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Um uh, you know, reading uh, reading Tolkien and feeling alienated, um, uh, kind of a uh, inner city kid. So I was always like the white kid in my you know in my first communion class. Uh, my parents were uh, <laughs> my parents met in what is now Belize, what was then British Honduras. So they were sort of your basic uh, community activists, like hippies without the weed. And uh, then I I went to. Uh, Marquette University, a Jesuit university, where I studied acting and met actually Joe Panzetta, who works at the VCA. Who's sitting right there. <laughs> that guy. And uh, then um, we put a band together and started playing bar gigs as soon as we could. We were both getting a degree in theater, but uh, mostly on the weekends we were playing in the bars in Milwaukee. And then I moved out to, uh, well, I spent a semester in Dublin busking. And then I moved out to Boston and began playing on the streets and in the subways and then became a touring musician in my early 20s. And that's been my entire life up to this moment. That is awesome. Was there, was, when did you pick up a guitar? Seven years old. So that's coming up on 43 years ago. So, like, so is there like a before guitar and an after guitar moment? I presume there's a for, before guitar moment, but I do not remember. Right, but so when you're seven, somebody hands you a guitar and yeah, I saw I saw a camp counselor like playing a guitar, and I just returned home from summer camp, and I was like, mother, father, put one of those in my hands, and I had great parents. Yeah, w w the hippies. The um, yeah. did you take lessons or were you self-taught or how did that no, work? No, I took lessons for until I was in my teens. I took lessons. Uh, mostly just learning the chords to Beatles tunes yeah. uh, while the teacher played the melody. So I got a nice structural introduction to the guitar, uh, and then uh, and then I got into the uh, you know into the uh, the American fingerstyle people, Leo Kopke and Michael Hedges, and then I got into the great American songwriters, um, both sort of present, which to me would be. Uh, you know, Amy Lou Harris and Gillian Welch and Los Lobos, but also past, like Duke Ellington and uh, uh, um, Hoagie Carmichael, uh, you know, that, that sort of, that entire crowd. And of course, Tom Waits and Bob Dylan. You sure. Can't, sure. You, you can't forget that. Yep. Do you, do you think of yourself as a good guitar player, a proficient guitar player, a great guitar player? Um, if I had to make a living solely as a guitar player, playing sideband to other people, I might be able to just do that because I'm, I'm pretty good at listening, but I don't have a ton of chops. Um, as far as songwriters go, I'm probably an outlier and probably better at it than most songwriters. Got it. Um, yeah, I've just thought about it more. It yep. interests me more, so I've thought about yep. it more. Right, I'm going to ask you about lyrics in a second, but just let me stay with the songwriter thing. When you are writing uh, a song, are you working on a guitar? Are you working on a piano? How do you work out your, your, your song line? It's always the guitar, and it's always um, sort of a, a feel first, and then chords, and then a melody, and then the words emerge out of the sounds of that melody. Really? So your order is music to words, not words to music? Almost all the time. I mean, I, I am writing constantly in a notebook, but that stuff is sort of lying on the ground waiting for the right melody to uh, suggest itself and then it'll emerge through that melody. Uh, usually you just get a line and then, you know, you, you ask yourself who's talking and you go forward from there. I love that. I, um, I've heard you play at least one song that, that the way you described it, it wrote itself pretty much end to end. Do you know the song yeah. I'm talking about? Um, well, there's a few. Uh, let's see, Mailman wrote itself end to end. Uh, are you listening? Uh -huh. That one wrote itself front to back. Yeah, there. I, I've had maybe three or five of those in in my twenty five years. I've had a couple of experiences like that as well, where the idea it's like a movie runs behind your eyelid and you can see the whole thing, right? Yes, yes. Yeah, and I think you you buy those by all the work you do yeah. on the dissatisfying 
um, make it better, run 15 drafts of it songs. Yes. You know, you, you got to write those, which are the bulk of your writing. Yeah. I think just to get ready. Yeah, those are awesome. And I, and I think that word is the right word, awesome moments. Yeah. When the muse visits uh, yes. and hangs around until you, she or he is sure that you have properly paid attention. Right. Yeah. You got this? Right, yeah. right. Um, when I, <clears throat> I first um, really became aware of you at a house concert with Deborah Heesh, and I came away thinking of you as sort of poet, philosopher, uh, first, and then sort of lyricist, songwriter, second. So that was just my impression. But say some things about you as poet, or you as lyricist, or you as, you know, philosopher. Well, um, I have a few dear friends that are poets, and I revere the poets. I, you know, I have shelves and shelves of books of poetry, and I'm sort of pen pals with a few poets, uh, Naomi Shihab Nye and uh, Lisa Olstein and uh, um, Chris Dombrowski. Um, and I don't think I'd consider myself a poet okay. simply because I haven't written a lot of poems. I, you know, maybe I've written 20, 30, 40 poems, but I've written hundreds and hundreds of songs, and I've started hundreds more. Mm -hmm. and, and I've learned hundreds and hundreds of songs. Um, I, and as for philosopher, I, I will I, I, I will just say that I feel like the, the entry bar into the crowd of philosophers is lower. I, poets to me are, are spectacularly verified, but you know everybody's a, everybody's an armchair philosopher, including me. And again, I read you know I, I minored in philosophy and I, I read a few modern philosophers, Sam Harris, Dan Bennett, uh, Peter Singer, um, but you know that that's. I, I, yeah, I don't know what the credentials are for philosophy. I mean, I do know what they are to, to teach it at the university level, but I have no intention. Uh, but it, all of this sort of informs my work. I'm always on the lookout for, I guess, the durability of a, a phrase, the durability of a sentiment. And, and uh, you know, for there, we're going to have to go into truth and beauty, and beauty is truth, and truth is beauty, and... You can ask Emily Dickinson about it. You can ask the Greeks about it. And I tend, I tend to agree. Uh, one digression. Uh, you know, the, Dr. King said, uh, only love drives out hate. Uh, hate. Uh, only love drives out hate. But Buddha also said that. And we have them both on record as having said that. And considering that Dr. King was coming up in the early 20th century in America, I don't know if he necessarily would have read the Dhammapada. I mean, he was a minister. So I look at that and I think, I bet that that's a universal truth floating around out there. And if you're really digging hard with your spiritual shovel, you're going to clunk the shovel into that rock. Um, that's so. really interesting sentiment. If you were, are you a universal truth songwriter? Is that your center of gravity? Um, I suppose so. I, I mean, I suppose so. Uh, that's that's what you're after. I mean, that's why uh, that's why that Beatles tune, "All You Need Is Love," mm -hmm. does so well because I, I actually think that's true. I think that's good advice. It's corny when you just say it out loud in print, but if you sing it and then add that trombone line after it, I think most primates are convinced. What that you, what an interesting observation. So you know we've sort of just journeyed here from the morphic field, you know, the you know the hundred monkeys where there's these things that are, you know, archetypal, they're morphic, they're, you know, they're there, right? And yeah. so now we're talking about on-ramps and access. So, you know, Sam Harris, you mentioned, very specific guy with a very specific, you know, sort yeah. of view on things. So pretty heady stuff, not for everybody. Uh, yeah. Emily Dickinson, there's another name that you mentioned, uh, like coming from a whole other direction, another on-ramp. Not necessarily for everybody, and now you're talking about the Beatles, so you know different on ramp, and so you know I'm sort of getting this view of Peter Mulvey as you know sort of uh, universal truth on ramp. Um, yeah. I hope so. I mean that's that's the job of the artist. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I saw a cartoon once that said um, 
uh, it was uh, uh, James Joyce's refrigerator, and it had this note on it that said, you know, one, bananas, two, paper towels, three, forged within the smithy of my soul, the uncreated conscience of my race, four, call mom. Yeah. <laughs> I, and I dig that, you know, uh, like, that's the artist's job, and in some ways it's an ordinary job. I just, I, I, and I agree with you, like, you should be aware, if, as an artist, you should be aware of the on-ramp you're building. Like, I think mine is a little heady and a little small C Catholic and a little all over the map, and that's probably what the guitar is for, mm. because there are people who come to see me play who just like to hear this guitar and hear somebody sing, <laughs> and that's fine. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm it, One of the things that's so enjoyable about your live performances and I'm to the extent that somebody listens this deep into this little interview is your small C Catholicism. Yeah. You know, that kind of universality of your point of view and how wide it ranges. And so the fact that we would in the same conversation be referencing some of these giants of literature, James Joyce's refrigerator, uh, something from the Buddha, you know, some other random thought that's sprung into your head. I mean I think to me that's one of the things that I um, admired immediately about you as an artist is that small C Catholicism, that universality and breadth of your vision. Thank you. Well, yeah, and thank you. So I would, um, I'm conscious of the fact that not everybody's as interested in this conversation as you and I will be. And um, so let's think about like a fun way to kind of bring this to a conclusion. You're going to be joining us. You're going to sing. You're going to talk. Um, you got a guitar right there. If I were to ask you to play, you know, a few bars of, of like uh, of something, what what comes to mind? What comes to mind is um, what comes to mind is uh, uh, we were just talking about, you know, uh, the Beatles. You know, I love you. You know, I love you still. Oh, great fun shui. Great fun shui. The, the one chord with the drama. Will I wait a long lifetime? Straight up one, which is another beautiful move. If you want me to, I will. And uh, the beauty of the Beatles to me was that they were just good at taking simple things. Like everyone learned all those chords in the first month that they played guitar. Yeah. And they were just good at putting them on the coffee table in a better way. You know, this goes here, this goes here. And you're like, oh, now I want to sit on this couch. Now I feel comfortable in this room. So, I love that. So give us the first few bars of one of those songs that wrote themselves. Oh, of mine. Yeah, so uh, this will be good, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So this one. This one wrote itself. Are you listening? Are you listening? Are you listening? Are you listening? I got it. Oh, that's sweet. Well, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, there's Peter Mulvey. I'm Kevin Hoffberg, and we are looking forward to seeing you on June 2nd at Vashon Center for the Arts. Peter, thank you. Thank you so much.